Hey everyone, it's Kim Sandberg. Welcome today to another Watch and Learn. Today we're doing something really special. We're actually coming to you live from the Handy Quilter Filming Studio. We're doing a special edition of the Clueless Quilter. And today with me, I have my good friend and coworker, Ashley Ruder. She's gonna share a little bit of her quilting journey and experience. So Ashley, tell us about yourself. Thanks for having me, Kim. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here talking to our Handy Quilter followers. Yeah, so um, the main reason we wanted to talk about me being a clueless quilter is that I have an interesting overlap. I come from the apparel sewing world. Exactly. And a lot of people move from quilting into sewing clothing or sewing clothing and moving into quilting. And we thought that would really spark some fun topics for us to discuss today. Exactly. Because I, I also come from a background like that's how I learned how to sew was yeah. making my own clothes back in 4-H, doing that whole thing. You definitely took it a step further, though, than just the 4-H fashion show. Yeah. And I yeah, 4-H wasn't even a thing by the time I was in like middle school. But that's about when I started sewing. And I eventually went on to FIT in New York. I went to design school and worked in the fashion industry. And that really was kind of like two um, very close worlds right. for me, um, being inspired to make my own clothing and learning different sewing techniques and, you know, really being immersed in that world. Um, it was a really great thing. But I have to tell you, I was like, when I learned to sew, sewing wasn't a cool thing anymore. Like my mom was like, you don't need to do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like we've moved on. Uh -huh. um, she had a big sort of feminist agenda. The machine was only for hemming your pants when you were in a hurry. <laughs> and so me sewing dresses and, and cute things, it was kind of weird. And also quilting was not a big part of my life. Nobody right. in my family really did a lot of quilting, long arm machines I had no idea about until I came to Handy Quilter. Yeah. So that um, was, I, I, I was a sewing snob basically, yeah. Yeah. you know, by the time I came to this. Yeah. You know, the, the quilting section in the fabric store was just taking up a lot of great real estate that wasn't <laughs> devoted to apparel fabric. So I had a lot of prejudice to overcome in right. becoming a quilter. In becoming a quilter. And so the clueless quilter, really. Right. Right. So so I just want everybody to know. So Ashley made the dress that she's wearing. She makes a lot of your own clothing. She makes yeah. a lot of it. She is, I would call you a master seamstress. Like she knows what she's doing. She can make clothes fit. She makes them beautifully. She knows how to use a sewing machine. She's my best spokesperson, <laughs> really. Um, but yes, I, I really, at this point, sewing clothing is not an elaborate process for me. It's right. just some steps I learned. And, it, you know, it's not, um, it's not as complex as quilting seems to me. And that's interesting because a lot of conversations I have with people, they feel the opposite way. They've been making quilts forever right. and they're like, right. I could never make a pair of pants. Um, to me, quilting has infinite possibilities. Mm -hmm. What is a quilt? You know, that was a crash course education for me anyway. And yeah. by the time I got introduced to that, it just is so big and wonderful. And, you know, sewing a pair of pants, that's like a tube for the left side, a tube for the right side, and some way to keep it held up around your middle. Like it's it's not as exciting. So, right, right. Um, that will lead me to you know how I came to quilting. Yeah, I yeah. started at Handy Quilter in 2018, right. about a week before International Quilt Festival in Houston, which, as many people know, is like it's the mecca yes. of quilting. Yes. And you know, so that was just huge for me because I thought I knew what quilting was. Right. I thought I knew what a quilt was right. and it just blew my mind and in some ways that's a really crazy entry point because right. some people will start a class in their community they'll have a friend or relative mm -hmm. teach them how I was introduced to all of these stunning amazing yeah. world-class quilts over the top and I was like oh, okay yeah quilts are interesting like uh -huh. I you know I didn't say I could do that to myself but I definitely was just um crash course yeah. right into it's a, it's a culture it's a community it's a yeah. way of life for people right and um and i i love it but there's a lot i don't know so hence the clueless quilter yes <laughs> the the master seamstress becomes the clueless quilter because yeah. it's different it's different i mean i'm sure you saw that even at houston just the culture mm -hmm. the culture of quilting and houston being like you said the mecca of it yeah crazy crazy okay so what was the, like the next steps that you went through like 
learning you know, um, about quilting. You know, at the time I decided to make a quilt for my brother, mm -hmm. um, you know, because that's that's the number one lesson I learned is that quilting oftentimes is not about yourself. When I sew clothing, 99% of the time it's for me, it's right. my selfish sewing. Mm -hmm. Quilting since I started has really been about things I want to create for other people in my life. Right. And I thought, okay, I work at Handy Quilter. Everyone asks me when I'm going to quilt, if I don't quilt, and what am I going to do? So I bought some fabric, picked out a pattern, yeah. and I made it on my domestic machine. Right. And I remember I was so proud when I finished it, and I didn't bring it in to show it off. I'd already given it away to my brother. And that in of itself, the show and tell process, I skipped. That so was important. another lesson. <laughs> we'll get to that. So um, I, you know, had pieced it on my domestic, and I, mm -hmm. I, I told Brenda, who um, was our director of marketing at the time, and she yeah. said, oh, so did you stick your fingers with the safety pins a million times? And I said, yeah, yeah, I did that. Because you you actually quilted it. You quilted, yeah, quilted it, not yeah. just pieced it on your domestic machine. Yeah, right? and I quilted it. Okay. Way. So I had all my sandwich layers pinned yeah. together. Yeah. I didn't even know it was called a sandwich. I just put the pins in because it made sense. Right. And she said, okay, so how long did you wrestle with it on your machine? You know, did you feel yeah. like, you know, um, tired? Were your shoulders hurting? And I said, yeah, that happened too. Yeah. And, and then she said, well, how about that little tuck? You always get that last little uh -huh. tuck of fabric, no matter how hard you try to manage that at the very end, when you're quilting on a domestic machine, you can't escape bit. it. Yeah. And I said, yeah, that happened too. And then she said, well, the next time you're probably going to put it on a frame on one of our machines, right? And I said, yes, yes, I am. That would be much easier. I can see why that much is a thing. <laughs> so that was clueless quilter lesson number one. Yeah. But I was still super proud of myself. Of course. Yeah. Well, and the fact that you just tackled it mm -hmm. and, and your sewing background definitely helped you out with that because you already understood how to make a straight seam and how to match and, and do all of those things that somebody who hasn't sewn at all. Yeah. It's, you know, that stuff is hard at first. Yeah. And yeah. it's almost one of those things you just have to get into and not yeah. digest too much what you're biting off. I agree. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> so that was quilt number one. It was made quickly and, and completely on your domestic machine mm -hmm. at home. She did not bring it in and show it off. That is a that is a golden rule here at Handy yeah. Quilter. Whenever we finish something, we have to bring it in and show it off. Yeah. Partly because it's our tribe and we appreciate what mm -hmm. we do. We can help build each other up. So your next quilt. It was What did you learn? Um, yeah. Well, I, I realized I want to do this on a frame and I want to use pro stitcher because Yay. I wanted to have beautiful quilting. Yeah. And that was actually this quilt I made um, for my cats because I have quilty cats. I and love the number one thing you also learn is that if you have cats, uh -huh. they want to sit on your quilts. Correct. So I thought, oh, I'll make them a quilt, you know, for their little kitty bed. Yeah. And they could just sit on that instead of what I'm working on. Do you think that actually works? No. No, 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 but they love this. But they love this. Don't don't they lay on it now all the time? They, they do. They do. I love it. In, a, in addition to anywhere else they can fit themselves. So fantastic. Um, and this was my first um, pro stitcher. And mm -hmm. this was like a revelation to me because yeah. I thought, wow, why would anybody ever quilt on a domestic machine? Why would someone use a ruler? Exactly. Why would, <laughs> like when there's pro stitcher, why, why would you bother with anything else? So I was totally enamored in this, you know, especially a quilt of this size. I mean, yeah. it took an hour. Yeah, it didn't take that long. And it was done. And I was like, okay, I can get behind this. Like, you know, one big thing I learned, and I'll talk about that with my next quilt, is that uh. quilting is not rational. Like, it doesn't make <laughs> sense to buy this big stash of fabric uh -huh. and cut it up into uh -huh. little pieces and, you know, involve blood, sweat, and tears in oh, your labor. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's that, it's that illogical. Yeah. <laughs> -ness. It's part of what like draws you in though, is creating that yeah. stash and having that next project you want to work on. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I, anyone who knows me really well knows that, um, I am a Marie Kondo, um, fanatic. Yes, you are. I am big on not having clutter and I really have a strong faith in the spark joy yes. philosophy. And this quilt here was the biggest, I'm trying to mind my, my language because I'm live. <laughs> um, it was a pain and I made it a pain for myself because yeah. of what I didn't oh. know. And, um, so every learned. time I look oh, at let's, it, yeah, let's open this up. It just gives me this feeling it's of such incredible a beautiful joy, quilt, though. 
I love this quilt. And I love that it gives you joy now because yeah. I remember when you were in the middle of the process, there were some days of not so much joy. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this was a simple pattern and it really is knowing what I know now. But I did really silly things like I was obsessed with getting the mixture of flowers in each piece. I fussy cut probably 60% of these squares. Like, why would I do that now? Well, but it was super important at the time. I cut things in stacks, like four or five layers of fabric at a time, but yeah. I wasn't intelligent about how I laid them out. So some of my squares didn't meet correctly. Right. So I made like these really cool appliques to cover up the holes so, in, in my quilt. And this, and I love this because she figured this out. You guys can see one right here. She appliqued this flower on to cover up because the camouflage. This little piece right here wasn't quite big enough, if I remember right. Is yeah. that is that what yeah. happened? It, it wasn't was quite just... big enough. So she she got creative. Yeah. And I love this was only your third quilt and you were already like, oh, I'll just yeah, I have throw to some think, think, on think there. my way through this. <laughs> Um, yeah, and there, there were a number of things I learned about things I like and don't like. I used this beautiful Carly Porter Pro Stitcher pattern yes. um, to quilt it, but I, I learned like that I don't really like directional quilt patterns. No offense, mm. Carly, but yeah. that's what I used on this. So every quilt is like something I learn about what I love and don't love. Um, but, you know, also invest in your proper materials. You know, right. I've washed and loved this a lot. And the binding, yeah. I didn't really, I got that off the bargain bin and I feel like it's not uh, going to be long for this world. Do you feel like the binding, yeah, her bind, your binding is kind of, um, it's kind of shrunk at a different rate than yeah. everything else. Yeah. yeah. So learning the quality of the fabric matters, mm -hmm. which you knew from, from yeah. sewing clothes. I mean, quality is, in clothing really yeah. makes a huge difference, but also in quilting. But I'll tell you the compromise I made was that mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I'm a beginner. Yeah. And I don't need to be like investing in the best thing. I'm yeah. just learning how. And, you know, you don't want to short change yourself. You know, yeah. it's, um, you just have to believe in what you're doing and yeah. enjoy the process. So I agree. That's really what hooked me once this was done. I would walk into the room and see it. And it just, it was pretty and cheerful and colorful. It's gorgeous. And it just made me feel good that I'd accomplished it and learned yeah. a lot. So, you know, that little feeling of sparking joy in your life, that, to me is what quilting is because there's no other rational reason to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. We do it because me, we love it. For me, there's no, a lot of reasons for everyone. But. I, I agree with you. We do it because we love it. And this this is a beautiful quilt. I love too that you recognize the things that you've learned from this. I think sometimes as quilters, we tend to look at something like this and we look at it and we go, oh, that was a mistake. And, yeah. you, and you look at it as, no, that's something I learned from. Great way, great way yeah. to look at things. Learning moments. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's fold this one up. Do you want to throw it over I'll, that way? I'll do the old um, live TV he stash. Heave ho, heave ho over the other side. Yeah. That's yeah. like the equivalent of a cooking show. Yeah. You know, when they pull out like the fully baked pan of lasagna. And yes. You're like, oh, presto change out. That's where that came from. I'll just move the quilt off there. So that was a fun project. Yeah, absolutely. And I, um, after that, I started to think, okay, like I, I get this. I get this why I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I've been giving away quilts. And every time I would finish one, Vincent, my my partner, would say, well, do, what are you doing now? Do, do we get to keep that one? Or is that also for someone else? <laughs> so I finally worked on the quilt that's hanging oh, behind us. I love this one. And oh my gosh, this felt like it took my entire life. I learned about HSTs. I learned about flying geese, about making a snowball. I learned about... Um, all of these terms that just like, I was like, what, isn't it just two triangles? Like there's a name for all of this. Uh -huh. And that was my big introduction to the lingo. I had to learn the language of quilting. So I understood the directions here. Yeah. yeah. And that was kind of a big deal. Yeah. The language, it's different. Yeah. It's so, different. Yeah. you know, when you learn how to make clothing, you get used to some of the terms and mm -hmm. you, you understand how collars conventionally attach. You understand different types of waistbands. Everything becomes a very conventional way of doing things. You right. don't need to reinvent the wheel. So it had been a long time since I'd had to really think about how I was sewing. Right. Because this is different sewing. It is. This is um, standard quarter inch seams. And when you're pressing something, you know, you pick a method and you stick with it. Yeah. In apparel sewing, there's almost an exception to everything based oh, yeah. on what type of fabric you're sewing, what type of machine you're constructing on, whether you're right. overlocking or standard. Yeah. Um, all of these things that just, you know, being in my um, late 30s at the time, it had been a decade or so since I'd really learned something new. Right. Um, there was a lot of terminology. Yeah. A lot to learn. A lot to learn. <laughs> so what's one of your favorite terms in quilting, Kim? Hmm. Like what's a, 
The quilting. Well, I, you know, you mentioned earlier the sandwich, like mm -hmm. that is something that I talk about all the time. And I just throw that out there Yeah, with quilting. And I've had people be like, um, so there's food in quilting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, actually there is because when you're sewing, if you, I don't have my bowl of peanut M&Ms right here, mm -hmm. you know, but um, so sandwich, quilt sandwich is always a good yeah. one that's, that's thrown yeah. me. I'm trying to think of some other ones when I was learning how to quilt. It's been a long time though. I yeah. I remember. Well, you know, but coming yeah. from the apparel world, yeah. especially when you work in, you know, mass production, uh, companies always have their acronyms they use for oh, things. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so I love a good acronym. And yeah. for me, the half square triangle, HST. it sounds cool, but you know, you can shorten that to HST. So I, I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's a fun. Fun one. So it looks like we have a question. Oh, I would think spark joy and minimal would not go well with making quilts. <laughs> you know, that's Janet, so true. such a good question. So how does that work for you, Ashley? You know, um, I'm going to answer that in a long format. Okay. Everything I go about is usually the long way. It's okay. Um, we host on Fridays, Kim and I host yeah. something here at Handy Quilter called the Friday Fun Day Quilting Hour. Yes. And we um, have... For, like from 12 to 1 yeah. it's for all employees yeah. to just enjoy the machines enjoy each other's company have lunch together and we have a bin it's kind of the take a penny leave a penny bin mm -hmm. like you have at the grocery store and it's for fabric scraps i do not hold on to uh -huh. my scraps uh -huh. it's something that i don't know if maybe that's like the last um what i want to say like the last hallmark of becoming a true quilter is that i will yeah. then stash maybe um or not or not but so far i once i'm done with a quilt i'm like I, I had that experience. I'm done. I'm the same way though. Yeah. Like I, you're the only other person I've met with quilting this the same way. Yeah. I want to, I, I finished that yeah. quilt. I'm I got enough that life fabric. out of it. Yeah. I will use the scraps on the back and whatever's left yeah. goes in the scrap bin that I, I, I give to other people. Like hang on to yeah. it long enough to make a backing or a binding. So I put it in the scrap bin. So what I've seen over time <laughs> is that um, there's little pieces of me yes. in other people's quilt projects. And um, yeah, the, the stashing has actually come back to bite me a few times. There have been times when I've been prepared to make a type of block or I want to move on to binding and I really don't have something on hand, which... Uh you know, is silly. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll get there at some point. It means a trip to the store. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes you need to purpose by anyway, you mm -hmm. can't just yeah. get ahead. So yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it means you don't have a huge stash, but that's okay. Yeah. I don't either. Like I, I used don't have to, a big stash. I used to keep a very large apparel fabric stash mm -hmm. and you know, what's happened is, um, you know, that, that stash that is beyond your life expectancy yeah. is very common any anytime you have a craft mm -hmm. and the problem is i've hung on to fabrics thinking about things that i would make and and kind of like planning them for a certain mm -hmm. type of outfit and what happened to me especially after moving from new york to florida back to utah mm -hmm. and then getting older my body changing yeah. my taste changing my lifestyle changing i grew out of my fabrics before mm -hmm. i ever made anything out uh -huh. of them and they just no longer suited me or the fantasies i had in my head right and that's an interesting thing about quilting is that you know, like I said earlier, I mm -hmm. believe it's for the people around you. It's about the stories mm -hmm. in your life. I don't have to worry about outgrowing a quilt. I don't have to worry about no. giving a quilt to somebody and not having it fit or, True. you know, it's just, there's all these things that are not hangups for me yeah. when I am in my quilting mode. It's like a little switch I flip between seamstress mode and quilter mode. And, quilter and mode. um, I spend a lot more time in quilter mode yeah. <laughs> at this well, point in my life. It's kind of hard not to work in yeah. here at Handy Quilter. So we have another question. Um, it looks like Doris is asking, what is the name of the quilt, this quilt pattern? Do you remember? I I oh know it's a, it was a kit you bought from Connecting mm -hmm. Threads it's, that's no longer available. Yeah, it's, but... it's out of stock. It is a Tiffany Hayes quilt. And, oh, that's, right. and that's needle in a Hayes stack. Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S. Um, yes. And I don't know if she publishes this pattern elsewhere. Um, but she really, I've noticed a lot of her quilts have these types of, um, I don't even know how to describe this because I'm such a clueless quilter, but, um, <laughs> you know, she always has a lot of, to me, it's very intricate pieces, yeah. a lot of flying geese, a lot mm -hmm. of half square triangles, a lot of borders. Yeah. Um, and she also makes a lot of like types of templates for cutting she does. special shapes. Yeah. Um, if you ever see her at a quilt show, it's really fun. Yeah. And, um, you know, shout out to. Um, Tiffany and her husband Scott, who right. um, they do use our machines, and he quilts her quilts, and they're they're a nice dream team. Yes, they so are. I was super proud of making a quilt that was designed by our friends, and yeah. um, 
I just enjoy it. I, I use this often in my house. Yeah, so it's a gorgeous quilt. It's a gorgeous quilt. We'll find that, we'll find that pattern too. And we'll, um, we'll post that later. Um, so let's see, is it Fatima? I hope I'm saying your name right. You oh. are, you are both not alone when it comes to stash. That's oh, good, good to know. <laughs> Cause I, I, you know, you talk about not outgrowing your quilt fabric. Mm -hmm. I have found that if I have fabric sitting around for more than about two years, I lose interest in it. Yeah, you so, get bored of looking at yeah, it. Yeah, so that's, I tend to purpose buy and then I make mm -hmm. something quickly and then, you know. Yeah, yeah. And let's see, um, Vicki says, my stash gives me incentive to live to be 138. Hey. Yeah, it's the um, I'm eternal right youth elixir. Just yes. buy more, more fabric. I like that. I know, because we got to get all these projects done, right? right? I love it. All right, so next quilt. Let's talk okay. about the next quilt here. Some of you might recognize this quilt yeah. from um, some Instagram and Facebook yeah. posts that Johnny Barfus has mm -hmm. done. Um, he was with me in the studio the day I finished this on the Capri. Yeah. And this was my first quilt that I did completely free motion. And um, there's a couple of things about this quilt. So I'm just going to unfold so it. Cool. We'll have to stand up because. Okay. Um, well, and we can drape yeah, it over. Yeah. We'll give I me a corner. I have to be able to manipulate it. Oh. Here we go. Such a great quilt. We've also had this in the backdrop of at least one watch and learn. I know. Yeah. So, so we get such a, a great quilt. That. You can pull that corner over there. We can get it so everybody can really yeah. see that. Uh, you see that beautiful buffalo. So great. So this is really fun because yeah. a lot of people that come to visit Utah to our retreats here in mm -hmm. the studio that, you know, you're in the West and there's bison. Yeah. I think there are bison buffalo yeah. everywhere. And, and it's like such an emblem of, of where I come from. And um, I saw this pattern at Quilt Market um, the same first year I worked at oh, Handy Quilter. Okay. And I loved it. I fell in love with it right away. And I remember thinking, I am so far away from being able to make that quilt. Mm. And so I took the the designer's name mm. and I'm linking on it's, where, it's sewn you, by Wyoming. So, yeah, sewn, and sewn the by Wyoming, yeah. Patterns called Rome. I had uh -huh. to make a tag for it once. I remember so I remember now. that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the assist. You're That's welcome. why you're my good you're friend. You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I I took that and later I bought the pattern on Etsy as I was understanding what I was looking at more because mm -hmm. the more I learned then I was like, oh, that's just some fabric and an applique and yeah. these blocks are just the easiest thing because yeah. they're all improv. They are. And they were pieced on a foundation paper. And I know this now, but at the time yeah. I was so intimidated by it and I thought, oh, yeah. it's going to be years before I do something like right. that. Right. And it was about a year. A year. Yeah. And I think that's been one of the most exciting things is, is being able to reflect on how much I've learned because I really thought it would just take ages before I even could be happy or satisfied with the kind of work right I would do on a quilt like this right and so I just worked up my nerve and I've been practicing 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 and I I'm gonna tell an embarrassing story should I tell the embarrassing you should story? totally tell the embarrassing story <laughs> so um I was so I didn't want to mess it up and yeah. I was so stressed out about how I was going to quilt it, what kind of designs I was going to put, would yeah. I be happy with it? And when I finally came in, meanders. Yeah. And that is one of the most important things I've learned about free motion quilting mm -hmm. is you don't need to have a really big arsenal mm -hmm. of motifs and shapes, whether nope. you're on a domestic machine, a stationary machine or a movable frame, mm -hmm. um, long arm, just pick some shapes you can do and that you enjoy 
doodling yeah. and get going and, and finish your quilt because nothing is as awesome as a finished quilt. I totally agree with you on that. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah. No, this is this is such a fun one. If I remember right, this was the first quilt in the building that was completely quilted on a capri. Wasn't Poss that right? Possibly uh, that. I know that's the case for the next one. Yeah, the next one. She. You, yeah. I, I feel. I feel like you had a couple of firsts. Yeah, and in I the, in the building. So. I'm a millennial. Um, I'm an older millennial. I barely qualify as a millennial, but as I get older, I used to resist anyone labeling me that. But now, especially since I've taken to quilting, I I want credit. I want the gold star. I yeah. want to like have yeah. my achievement points. So I tend to brag a little about oh, the things that I've fine. been doing. I'm glad that you do. We should be proud of what we accomplish. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So what's the next quilt you got here for us? Well, I'm going to talk about how proud my mom is of me. Oh, right. This is a um, special quilt. <laughs> They're so, all special, but this but, one's extra special, yeah. right? <laughs> and, you know, all my other quilts I have today have been washed. They've been well yes. loved. My mom keeps this quilt in like the, the shrine Christine. in her house. Um, I gave this I to my mom and dad up. for Christmas this year. And it's just, a, it's a simple design, but the yeah. fabric is beautiful. Yeah. And the quilting. And this was a, a kit. So I've also fun. learned I love kits. Mm -hmm. I love buying kits. I don't like pre-cuts, but if I can buy a kit where everything's coordinated, yeah. I... We'll just go to town on that. And yeah. so I got this from Connecting Threads. And um, I I don't think they still have this one. No, I don't um, think they do. I think it's called Imperial Ballroom is the collection mm. it's from. It's pretty. And so the Moxie, we were in development. Yeah. And I love the Moxie. Right. I love the Moxie yeah. so much. And I'll tell you why in a moment. But um, I was the first person to quilt a complete quilt on the yes. Moxie in the building. Yep. And um, it was a really new experience for me, moving the machine right. and, you know, really having to do a big, you know, yeah. quilt like this. And I, what I love about it is that that machine is at a more accessible price point. Right. I don't want to sound like an infomercial, like we're yeah. on HSN now, um, but <laughs> It's really about having maybe, you know, you need a smaller space, you need a, a machine that's, you know, not, yeah. not the Cadillac like the Infinity, mm -hmm. but just the concept of, you know, that has attracted a whole different group of quilters who mm -hmm. never thought they would come to long arm quilting. Right. And especially, um, you know, people who are newer won't always think about making that investment. Right. So it's just that accessibility mm -hmm. and having, you know, a different quilter join our family. I'm just really, you know, proud of, of that, that, yeah. you know, we put that out there for people who love handy quilter. Yeah. And, you know, I just didn't like, I get my, my bonus points, my trophy for being first. Exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah. We, we celebrated this as a company when you announced that you'd finished the first <laughs> one on the Moxie. So exciting. But now, so your mom keeps this in a shine. Basically, well, because I she's so it, proud of yeah. your accomplishments, yeah. which I love because, as you mentioned, when you were younger, sewing wasn't something she pushed you towards yet. Now, yeah. the shrine quilt. Yeah. Yeah. Now <laughs> I, I do make clothes for my mom occasionally, yeah. and I was super happy to make this quilt. It's like, you know, when you make a quilt for someone in your life, mm -hmm. for me, it was like just a big thank you for yeah. all that support I got from my parents. Absolutely. And you know, it was just, but they think this quilting is so amazing. And I did a little meander. I did a swirl because yeah. swirls are, are my jam. Simple. And a little echo leaf pattern. Yeah. Um, and, you know. Oh, yeah, we can really see the quilting on the back Yeah, here. it really pops out on the back. But, you know, it's it's one of those things when you share that gift of being able to make something with the yeah. people in your life, they're always amazed, you yes, know. Yes, yes. And, and I sometimes didn't realize how, how, far along I'd gotten. This is quilt number nine. I yeah. made 13. Which I love. I love the, her quilt label actually says quilt number nine yeah. for mom and dad. Love from Ashley, December 2020. And she stitched this out um, from the stitch sub, 710, yeah. right? Uh, this, yeah. Yeah. The 710. The HQ 710. And, uh, and it's so fun because it, um, she just added that special little touch, but mm -hmm. I love that the name of it is quilt number nine. I yeah. love it. <laughs> well, I started numbering them because I just, I don't know. I was like, I want to know how many I make. Like, I think it's fantastic. I yeah. have no clue. I have no clue. How At many some point I'll probably stop yeah. counting, but yeah. um, you know, it's definitely, oh, it's, a it's gorgeous done quilt. and that's the best thing. Right. Nothing's as good as a done quilt. I a finished totally quilt. agree. So Janet's um, Janet's commenting here. She likes quilts too. She likes kits also. Kits kits are fun because they take away that aspect of having to yeah. figure out are these fabrics going to look good together, right? Right. So yeah, we we love kits. We love kits. 
She also said I'm not clueless anymore. So yeah, that's no, you're not. I keep I keep teasing her that she's going to put me out of a job here soon. She's learning so much. <laughs> well, we're probably a little ways away from that. But that's an interesting <laughs> discussion, too, because at what point am I going to feel like I'm not a beginner? Because mm -hmm. I still categorize myself as a beginner. And that's something that I think I will actually enjoy being a beginner at this for a long, long time, because there's so many techniques to learn. Yeah. There are types of quilts to make. Um, and, you know, just kind of the, the journey of learning from different people right. um, and, and really um, just discovering new methods. It's like there's yeah. just this complexity. There's people who paint their fabric and oh, yeah. embroider on it and do appliques and couching and felting. And, you know, it's just endless. And, and I, I don't see the um, bottom of that anytime soon. Awesome. I think that's so cool. Okay, so let's take a look at this next quilt. And and I love this one has the same quilting pattern on it. Yeah. And that's as this um, one back here, the the um yeah. pro stitcher design that we use. And it's called um Bread Basket. Bread Basket by um Urban Elements. And it's kind of a go-to, and it's fun because we did it really big on that one. I shouldn't say mm -hmm. we, you did it really big on that <laughs> one, and we did it really small on this one. So she's already like getting her favorites. I, I know. love it. And that was why I wanted to show this one today to show in comparison with the larger one because, you know, nothing is as satisfying as a finished quilt. Right. And what I've learned is that there's nothing wrong with just picking that motif that you yeah. like and trying it in different ways. And several people have used bread basket. I mm -hmm. saw it in the studio yeah. and every, I'm not going to lie, almost every quilt I make if I want to just get it done, I ask myself, would this look good in bread basket? Like, <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that you asked yourself that question. Would it, would, pre, would bread basket fit yeah. this one? That's and it, you know, it kind of looks like the top of a, like a clover leaf yep. roll or yep. a design that you'd find in baked bread. Yeah. And so it has a memory for me because my grandmother and all of my, um, my mom and all of her sisters make the same recipe for oh. every family meal. Cool. And so like what well, the first time I saw it and I was like bread basket, it just, it has that memory. I get it. <laughs> for me with my family. So I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. It was a fun quilt. This is one is there. You had some of this fabric left over from the yeah. back. It's yeah, now in like that's three, that's three of my quilt projects because I took some from the bin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your next one you've got here? Well, this is the last one I have to show. Yeah. And it's really oh, it's a fun one. super exciting for me to talk about this yeah. um, because we've just finished Academy, yes. our big consumer show. Um, the big conference that we do every year. Yeah. And the theme at this year's Academy was wedding ring quilts. Mm -hmm. And I think this was probably the experience that kind of told me in my heart that, yeah, I'm, I'm a serious quilter now. You are. Because I got to show my quilt with the big kids. Yeah, like, she did. Um, you know, all of the educators that taught at Academy and some of our friends in the community made wedding ring quilts and sent them in and mm -hmm. we hung them all over the building. Yeah. And I made a version of this um, from a December 2020 uh, American Patchwork, Patchwork and Quilting, Quilting magazine, magazine for a baby size quilt. And then I just made it bigger. Um, mm -hmm. And I got to I, I got to show this. And it's a raw edge applique. You can quilt as you go, but I pieced it on and then quilted. Yeah. Um, and it was such a proud moment for me to, to be a part of that and that it validates that every person at every point in their journey yeah. um, is doing something important and worthwhile and things you can celebrate and share. And that's an excellent point. Yeah. And yeah. I will tell you my method of learning, I'm the baby in my family. I was the only granddaughter for a very long time. And I'm, I'm the kid, mm -hmm. even though I'm, you know, over, yeah. like I'm 40 now, yeah. but that's my method of learning how to quilt. I follow around all of the educators and people who quilt in the building. I say, what are you doing? Oh, I want to try that. I want to do that too. And, and I just find oh. endless like knowledge in the community we have around us. And I just am like shameless about it. I'm like that little kid we sister that you can't shake. We love it. So you're stuck with we me. For a minute. I know, I know. And we love it. We love it. I love that she did a double wedding ring in a totally different style than anyone else did. We had yeah. painted ones. We had pieced ones. We had ones where people had purchased vintage tops and just quilted them. And Ashley's definitely stood out because it was a unique style. And she calls this one, I love this. She calls this one X's and O's. And mm -hmm. she quilted it with a pattern that is a, a plus or an X, depending on how you look at it. 
So really, yeah. really, really kind of fun. We'll see if we can see. Yeah, you guys can see a little bit of the, the. Um, let's see right there. Yeah, you can see some of those little X's right there. So, yeah, such a fun one, such a fun one for Academy. And you know what? We can actually leave this here. So we've got, okay. yeah, we've got a little, a little. <laughs> <song. Just laughs> as we smack smack you with a quilt. <laughs> oh, let's good. try and spread this out here <laughs> so it looks nice. Yeah, I like that. So. We have a couple of just a, a couple last minutes of wrap up here we wanted to talk about. So quilting terms versus sewing terms or like quilting yeah. things versus. We debate about this fairly yes, often. Yes, we do. Um, part of it is is when we're thinking of different ways to do stuff. Yeah. But there are some like serious debates that I don't think we'll ever resolve. No. And I would say the number one is um, to pin or not to pin. Right, right. Um, because in my apparel sewing, I had yeah. kind of a an interesting period of my time when I was in New York. Um, we had a sample room in our offices. And even when I would sometimes go into garment factories, they don't use pins right. because pins are dangerous, right. especially in a high-speed sewing environment. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things you can sew very competently without pinning them. Right. So I do not default to pins. And that has kind of come back to bite me with the piecing. Um, with a project I'm working on now where I um, really need to improve some of the accuracy. Making points meet. And yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I might come around to it, but Kim is a firm believer in the pins. Yes. Um, even from sewing clothes, yeah. you follow all the pin rules yes. and I am kind of a little willy nilly about it. Yeah. Like just, yeah. Yeah. But Depending. it's a big thing we discuss. We, we debate and she'll bring in projects and say, why is this not? <laughs> and I'm like, Ashley, use the pins. Use the pins. And I'm like, it lined up so, when I put it through. Yeah, I know, I know. But that's that's a debate that we have. So mm -hmm. it is, and it is different. The pinning rules for fat for uh, garment sewing is different than the mm -hmm. pinning rules for quilting. But yeah, yeah, I agree. It'll be a debate that continues to go. Another big one that we've run into is pressing, which you actually mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, in garment sewing. It's like you said, there, it seems like there's rules, but then you start reading the pattern or looking at the type of fabric yeah. you're working with and the rules go out the window, right? Yeah, I've, I find, you know, all those combinations of different types of seams you're doing, um, especially when it comes to fabric, you know, I would say the only hard and fast rule is never press on the face side. Right. And one day in Fun Day Friday, during our sewing hour group, I, I said to someone, well, you know, the best thing about quilting is that you can break that number one rule and you can yeah. press on the press face on the side front, of your fabric. On the front. And yeah. everyone in the room looked at me and they were like, we all press on the face side. That's just what you do. <laughs> I, me. And I was like, yeah, I mean, but that's a rule. Yeah. <laughs> and Not you can with break silk it, or those other yeah, yeah, wool and wool synthetic or velvet and or whatever. You get, yeah. Like, you know, even if you have like a poly rayon blend or something yeah. in a ponty knit, like you get a shine on it. You have to yeah. be careful, but I love pressing my blocks. It's like when you're making pancakes. And that first pancake is like discard, but then as you make more of them on Saturday morning for your family, you flip them over and they're perfect and round and golden brown and a nice crispy quilt block that's just pressed so flat. That's mm -hmm. like a little source of pleasure in my life. I agree, I so, agree. Um, but you know, I always get stuck when I'm pressing my seam allowances on my blocks, you know, mm -hmm. trying to decide, well, do I want them to go this way? Cause you know, oftentimes everyone will say, just press to the dark side so mm -hmm. it doesn't show. Right. Sometimes the blocks, I found like you really kind of have to think ahead about how yeah. many intersections you'll have. Correct. And so part of me learning how to really piece well has been planning that you you decide how it's going to go and you have to stick with it and right. not change your mind later. Right. And that's hard for me. It's been hard, I know. And then I'm, I'm one of those people that tends to press everything open on quilt blocks. Yeah. Because I quilted like, on my domestic machine for so many years. I want everything to be flat. So that's yeah. another discussion that we have from time to time. Yep. Um, another one is seam allowances because a quarter inch seam allowance in quilting is a quarter inch seam allowance mm -hmm. is a quarter inch seam allowance. But in yeah. clothing, it could be, you know, again, thing. like some some garments need a thicker seam allowance or a wider seam allowance for the structure, like in a pencil skirt or a sheath dress or even heavy outerwear. You mm -hmm. you need that support. 
in knits. You can get oh, down yeah. to an eighth, you know, Search those if you're in swimwear and like, you know, it, it can go the full gamut. And then there's clipping and grading and all of that good stuff that goes into the construction process. But I thought I sewed a really accurate quarter inch seam. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those things that really you have to school yourself on if you mm -hmm. come from garment construction because you can have a seam allowance that maybe is not the most accurate and your clothes will still fit when right. you think of the entire circumference around your body if you're off by an eighth of an inch it's not going to ruin your life right that's going to absolutely make you cry all over your quilt piecing if absolutely. you're inaccurate if um, you're off by an eighth of an inch on every single piece by the time you get to the other side you've added how yeah. many inches yeah, yeah. You, it's cumulative problems that you exactly. create for yourself. Exactly. So um, yeah, it's worth doing those little exercises and really testing out your machine and making sure you know where that quarter inch really is on the foot. Because sometimes even if you have a foot that has a quarter inch mark, it's not always super precise. Yeah. You yeah. have to find that out. You have to find that out, yep. And we've got a good tip here from Mary. She says, have you tried a dot of glue rather than pins? You know what, I have, especially on like curves, I've, yeah. I've started doing that a little bit and it's fantastic. Yeah. And I wound up using glue on this one, right? for this one. Um, and I really was just like, wow, how many things can I glue now instead of pinning? And that's something that you don't often see in apparel sewing. Like yeah. it, with appliques or embellishments, you'll see glue, but it's not as common to use adhesives and like, you know, fusibles and stuff like that um, to adhere two layers together like yeah. you see in the quilting world. And yeah. that's something I've I've started to take away. As I was finishing this, I was sewing some some things for my upcoming summer wardrobe. I yeah. talk about yeah. it like it's yeah. anyway. Um, and I just started using glue. I love the um, little glue sticks. And then there's that white glue with the little applicator yep. thing. And yep. yeah, the I the notions in the quilting world, I love discovering things I can use vice versa yeah. from my toolkit for mm -hmm. garments into the toolkit for quilting. It makes a That's big difference. That's enjoyable. Yeah. The crossover. So yeah. Well, I think, have we, have we talked about everything? Looking at my board up there. I think we talked about everything. You know, I didn't really tell people what I do at Handy Quilter. Oh, that's right. So tell them what you do because she, they wait, can, they can look for that. you. At, no, tell them what okay. you do. Cause she's, she's got a really cool job. <laughs> I am the events manager for Handy Quilter. So we have um, two big box trucks mm -hmm. um, and two vans that go around the country and support our retailers when they want to have you in their store for classes. And also we go to all of the, you know, most of the major quilt shows around the country. So I help plan those logistics and um, I have started to tell people I'm just a professional worrier. I, <laughs> I have checklists I go through, but then I just like to worry and imagine every scenario until I've exhausted them. And then I know I, I'm probably in good shape. Um, there are some weird things that happen sometimes when you send everything around the country and, yeah. and find out you miss something. But most of the time, it's pretty good. So yeah, I just, I worry a lot. And I'm a creative person, so I come up with a lot of scenarios to worry on. Yeah. And I found really that the process of making something, whether it's a garment or a quilt, and you've got to think through, I'm starting with the small part of this mm -hmm. block and getting bigger and then I'm gonna sew my borders on. It's yeah. just all of that visualization in my brain that gets me from A to Z. And that's the thing that like, especially making larger quilts or more complex mm -hmm. quilts, um, I've just thought, oh, I could never finish that. And I, it's the same thing every time we have a new year with a new schedule, I'm like, oh, there's so much ahead of us. But I just do it piece by piece one mm -hmm. piece at a time. I yeah. love that. That's a fantastic analogy. Yeah. That's a great note to end on. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you guys have all enjoyed getting to know a, I think we can fairly say, we can fairly say <laughs> a formerly clueless quilter. You are well on your way to becoming a master. I know you're still a beginner, yeah. but well on your way to become a master. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to have fun quilting this week. Happy quilting. Bye-bye.